Once again, it is good to see everyone here this morning. I want to start off and just asking you, how often do you have to be reminded of things? We talked about a little bit this morning in our, in our class of, of being reminded. A lot of times we have to be reminded of things. I, was, I guess I need to be thankful there was a, a reminder this morning when I got here. There was a voicemail on the, uh, the answer machine that reminding us that uh, the warranty on our 2002 van is almost about up. So we have that reminder that we might have to check into that. We, have, we get reminders from all kinds of people all over uh, for different things. Well, uh, today is, is somewhat a reminder um, as we uh, think about in this country. I need to be reminded that I need a new battery. While I work on that, we'll keep talking about it. I don't know whether this will work or not. Isn't it funny how these things happen at just the worst times? Because I, I did test it out earlier. Anybody got a battery? <laughs> Let me remind you, I'll be right back. All right, we do not have PowerPoint this morning, but that's okay. Behind, okay, well, if Jeff wants to push on the button, when y'all see me go, that means push the button, all right? Do you need help? Do you need somebody back to come do that while you do other things? Does anybody want to go help him push that button? Sorry for the distractions. But as you can see that we have a reminder today, what mothers deserve is what we're going to look at. Normally don't do you know, holiday sermons and things, certainly those that can be confusing toward, to people and thinking that they're religious holidays and things like that. But Mother's Day is a national holiday in the USA. And, and so on the second Sunday in May, uh, we, we honor our, our mothers, uh, frequently celebrated with flowers, cards and, and gifts given to mothers and a lot of times people attending church with their mothers and uh, you know the, the wanting to do that for them. But uh, one of, how did this holiday come about? This isn't about Mother's Day, but I want to start off in, in a little bit of historical uh, uh, facts of, of how it came about. But more importantly, what do our mothers deserve from us is really what we're going to get to, uh, not just on Mother's Day, but every day. Uh, so first, a little history. Uh, its origin in 1907, 1907, Anna Jarvis of Philadelphia started the campaign to honor mothers, which was about two years after her own mother had passed away. In 1910, West Virginia became the first state to recognize Mother's Day. A year later, nearly every state officially marked the day. And then in 1914, some seven years later, uh, after uh, Anna Jarvis uh, began this campaign, President Woodrow Wilson officially proclaimed Mother's Day a national holiday for the second Sunday of May. And then it became commercialized after that. Uh, Anna Jarvis's accomplishment soon became to her a bitter disappointment. She became enraged at its commercialization. She filed a lawsuit to stop a Mother's Day celebration in 1923. She was arrested for disturbing the peace at a War Mothers convention where white carnations 
her symbol for mothers were being sold to raise money. Her complaint, I wanted it to be a day of sentiment, not of profit. Today, many mothers are happy to receive flowers, are happy to receive cards or gifts or time. Just time. Mothers certainly deserve more than that, especially from a biblical perspective. And that's what we want to consider, we want to look at. What mothers observe, deserve, obedience. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Ephesians 6 and verse 1. Colossians 3 and verse 20, you have to hit it twice. Colossians 3 and verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Children, obey your parents. Does that sound like a suggestion? Does it sound like maybe it's just a, a, a wish on Paul's part as he's writing there? Paul's writing by inspiration. Solomon counseled his son, do not forsake the law of your mother. In Proverbs 1 and verse 8, do not forsake the law of your mother. Even Jesus obeyed his mother as he was growing up. Luke 5, uh, 2 and verse 51. Think about this. A lot of, I mean, we get... When we read these accounts, I encourage you to go back and read the context of all this, but but we can pick up little tidbits that that help us in in different aspects. Then he he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. We're talking about what our mothers deserve uh, is our obedience. And it says he was subject to them. The context, talking about his parents, but his mother kept all these things in her heart. Of course, this pertains mostly during the period of child raising, even in the the account here that we see in Luke chapter 2. So we have to ask ourselves, just as any time we're studying the Bible and we read these precepts, we we read these commands, we read these things that that are important to us, and we have to ask ourselves, are are we doing these things? And today is a good day that we can kind of take inventory, um, uh, you know, in thinking about are we doing these things in in reference to our mothers? Are are we giving them the the obedience that, that they desire that they deserve scripturally do we give our mothers the obedience they deserve well mothers also deserve respect Ephesians 6 I kind of like that Ephesians 6 and verse 2 Paul by inspiration says honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise Again, this doesn't sound like a suggestion. It's the first commandment. I mean, that, that just goes right out there. It's the first commandment with promise. Honor your father and mother. Solomon warned, warned of grave consequences for those who curse their parents uh, in Proverbs 20 and verse 20. Whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in deep darkness. We like to go to the Proverbs, and uh, we, we've think about it, there's a lot of positive things in the Proverbs, but there's also the what we would look at as negative. They're all positive in uh, edifying and teaching and all. It's not saying it's negative like we, we cast it aside, but, but, but we see the, 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 the promises and the curses, the blessings and the curses and those, those types of things. So whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in deep darkness. Interesting, there's a Chinese proverb. You, you kind of have to ask yourself, I wonder where the Chinese got these proverbs. You remember the patriarchal day during the patriarchal age? You know, these things were handed down. It's not like they made them up. Um, it, respect for one's parents is the highest duty of civil life. Kind of just paraphrasing what God's already stated, isn't it? It's not something new that the, the Chinese brought to us. We see as Proverb, common decency. You know, common decency demands that we respect our parents, especially our mothers. And that's not to, to lessen anything with the fathers, but, but, but we think about that with, with the mothers, is, is to, to respect our parents. Do we give our mothers the respect that they deserve? So again, we can take inventory of that and, and, and think about that. Mothers also deserve affection. 
Elisha demonstrated the affection properly due parents. In 1 Kings 19 and verse 20, we get a, a good glimpse here. He says, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow you. So we see this affection. And he said to him, go, go back again for what have I done to you? He's, so we, we see affection. Why not? Why, why, why should we not? They're not giving us so much affection as children. Such affection, it can be given in, in words. Simple, I love you. Or hugs or gifts. In some cases, in just memory. Remembering. I mean, you think about this. This is this, this national holiday. It, it, it can be bittersweet, but it reminds us. If our parents, if our mother's no longer here, we have the memories. We can think about that. God gave us the ability to remember. We remind ourselves in this aspect every second Sunday in May in that. They deserve affection. They deserve obedience, respect, affection, but also wisdom. A foolish son is the grief of his mother, Proverbs 10 and verse 1. A, a foolish son is, a, is a, a grief to his mother. Well, Proverbs 17 and verse 25, a foolish son is a, is a grief to his father and bitterness to her who bore him. Foolish son, foolishness, is bitterness to her who bore him. You think about wisdom in this respect, as mothers deserve wisdom. Well, that means we have to put forth the effort to obtain wisdom. So we can pray to, pray to God for wisdom. He gives it to us abundantly, and we, we think about those. But remember, Jesus increased in wisdom as he grew from childhood to adulthood. In Luke 2 and verse 52, Jesus increased in wisdom. He was human. He certainly did it, but he was, he was human. He was born of a virgin. He was growing. He grew in wisdom. He, he grew in stature and in favor with God and men. So when we think about the Proverbs, a foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her who bore him. That, the foolishness, that's, that's the, uh, the opposite of, of wisdom. Uh, a foolish son is the grief of his mother, Proverbs 10 and verse 1. The, the foolishness. So we recognize in Christ, he grew in, in wisdom. He increased in wisdom. And, and so should we. Mo mothers worry about their children. Uh, and, and I can say even when they're, the, the mother's 82 years old and the son's 55, they still worry about their children. And, and, and so when we think about that, we should not give them unnecessary grief, acting foolishly. You know, they deserve wisdom. They, they, they try to instill that wisdom in us as, as, as children, and they deserve uh, the, the, the uh, respect that we would increase in wisdom as we continue to grow older, and we would utilize that wisdom to lessen their worry. Much wisdom can come from the advice mothers themselves give us. I cannot count the number of times as growing up, as I'd leave the house, I'd hear the words, be wise. Be wise. I still hear them today. Be wise. That's biblical. That's biblical. You know, I, I never really put it together that, that, that you know, it, it's, it's simple. But, and, and I never really put it back to say, okay, well, I can go find a verse that talks about that. But, but it is. M much wisdom comes from the advice that mothers themselves give us. Do we give our mothers the wisdom that they deserve? Obedience, respect, affection, wisdom. What about righteousness? The righteous 
bring joy and gladness to their parents. And Proverbs 23, verses 24 and 25. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who begets a wise child will delight in him. Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her who bore you rejoice. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. Think about this aspect of mothers. Your mother will be glad. Let her. Let your mother be glad. How can we let our mothers be glad? How can we let her who bore us rejoice? By walking right in the sight of God. More important than any other achievement is that of righteous character. It's not our righteousness, and that's it. it's God's righteousness, but we're striving to be like Christ. We're striving to be obedient. And so when we consider these things, it's more important than any other achievement is that of righteous character. Nothing makes a mother more proud than to have a good, righteous son or daughter, one who is walking in the light. One who is being obedient, first and foremost, to God. Today, true righteousness comes through faithfully following Jesus. So, so, so to have a, a, a passage, Romans 3, verses 21 and 22, to talk about if, if righteousness, you know, let your mother be glad and let her uh, who bore you rejoice there in this righteousness from, from Proverbs 23. We think about this character. Here we see, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law, is revealed. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. We start thinking about this, this righteousness. So do we give our mothers the, the obedience that, that they deserve, the respect, the affection, the wisdom? The righteousness. Are we walking right according to God? Do we give our mothers the righteousness they deserve to see in us? What about care? Parents, especially you know, and that's it, widowed mothers, deserve our care. And there's a number of passages here. We'll start with 1 Timothy 5 and verse 4. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents, for this is good and acceptable before God. So mothers deserve care. If any widow has children or grandchildren, we recognize that. Let them first learn piety to, to show that, to, to, that, that, that action, that, that effort to, to do that. It's important at home to repay their parents. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 8. It says, but if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. You, you start thinking about that. Our, our, our parents, especially our mothers, they, they deserve our care, certainly uh, obedience and, and affection and, and all of these things, but, but our care also. First Timothy 5 and verse 16, if, if any believing man or woman has widows, let them relieve them, and do not let the church be burdened, that, that it may relieve those who are really widows. Let me start thinking about the context of all of these as Paul's writing uh, here what we call chapter 5 to this letter, this first letter that he wrote to young Timothy, a preacher. We see these things that, that, that are important. They're, they're, they're precepts. They're, they're things that, that we should practice because of the responsibilities that we have for mother. Biblical. About James 1, verse 27. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Indeed, children are to be their parents' social security. You know, we think about social security and the, the, the governmental support, that, that, that type of thing. You pay in all your life and hope that it's there when you, when you retire, those types of things. But biblically, scripturally, it's children. The children are to be their parents' 
Social Security to care for them. They deserve the best care that we can afford to give them. So do we give our mothers the care that they deserve? We may choose to give our our mothers flowers or cards or gifts on Mother's Day. Certainly think about them, especially those who have gone on. Think of them in a fond way. When we come here and we see the, the little ones running around and we can hear them, we think of the young mothers and you know, hopefully the, the long future that they have with their children. And, and we're thankful that we get to be a part of that and we get to enjoy that. And those of us who are older, we get to remember the, the days when ours were younger. And, but it also, we should think about our, our parents, our, especially at this time, our mothers. And, and give them what they rightly deserve, our obedience, our respect, affection, wisdom, righteousness, and care. I want to finish with the greatest example that we can see, the greatest example that we can even consider. I want us to enter in as we're getting ready to look at this passage. In John 19, verses 25 to 30, we start thinking about this in the aspect of, of from Jesus' mother's aspect. Think on that. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his, I'm going to struggle getting through this one, his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, And the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Think about that. What was on Jesus' mind? He's he's on the cross. I mean, these are his last words to be spoken in human form. Woman, behold your son. Verse 27. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. I want you to think about it. He spoke those words, I thirst. Think of what his mother was thinking at that time, how she would so desire that she's given her. A vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. These were in his last words. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. I thirst. It is finished. Are we practicing that type of reverence? That type of piety and and, and pure religion? By giving our mothers what they deserve every day. Not just the second Sunday of every May, but every day. As we think about all this, and it hit it twice, to be able to do these things scripturally. And now people today, again, there's going, there's people that are that Mother's Day is, you know, it's going to be all about what restaurant you're going to go to, and that that's fine. Going to taking them to eat, you know, the the gifts, the commercialization that's been done. But but we're Christian, you know, we're, we're thinking of things in the spiritual realm, and, and we want to think about that from you know scripturally, biblically, and 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 the examples, and especially following the example we just considered of, of Christ and. 
what was important to him, what was on his mind, what was he thinking about in his last words. And, and so when we do this, to be able to give our mothers what they deserve, especially when it comes to that righteousness part, but that wisdom of, of doing what is right and being wise, well, that is certainly going to be in walking right with God. And, and to be able to do that, we, we've got to have the instructions. He's, we've been given the full instructions on how to do just that. And, and so we have to put forth the effort to hear, to, to understand, to, to study those words, to know, to, to consider the evidence we utilize a, that, that term a lot. But, but do we do that? Do, do we give what our mothers deserve is, is really on us to, to study the Bible? Do we do that in hearing the word? and believing it therein, believing it to the point that, that, that we recognize we have sinned against God, we have hurt God, that would certainly hurt our mothers also. But most importantly, it hurts God. It's that godly sorrow. Many times we may have had motherly sorrow without godly sorrow, but it's the godly sorrow that produces that repentance. Really, when we look at that and we see, we want to recognize our Father in heaven who has given us all things. When we transgress, we go against him, we hurt him, and we've got to repent of that. Change our minds on the way we look at sin. We change our minds. No longer that it's, that it's, that it, that it's um, acceptable. Well, it's okay. As long as it's not these sins, it's just this sin. Maybe I'm just going to sin a little bit, and then I'm going to go back. And, you know, those, that's just the wrong mindset. We've got to repent of that mindset and, and, and go to the mindset of whatever is right, righteous. That's what I want to do at all times, in all things. Making the good confession based on that, that evidence that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It's important that we do that. If we haven't done that, then we can't really be giving our mothers what they deserve, which is you know, righteousness. We, we can't walk in the light if we're not in the light. We can't be in the light until we obey the gospel. When, when we uh, do that hearing and believing and repenting and confessing and being immersed in the waters of baptism, we can't be righteous with, with, when we're still that, that old person of sin. We've got to put that old man of sin to death and bury him in the waters of baptism, God will raise up a new creature to now walk and keep on walking in the newness of life. We haven't done that. We, we can't give what give our most what they deserve either, which is that that righteousness, that that wisdom. But even more than for our mother, it's for God. It, it's for our eternal salvation to obey the gospel, to be added to the church and to the kingdom. And to walk faithfully until death. If you haven't obeyed the gospel, you're not in Christ. You may have been touched by these words. You may have been, your interest may have been piqued with those things. But as Christians, we have to think, am I a Christian? Not if I haven't obeyed the gospel. If I haven't been obedient, how can I claim to be Christ-like who was obedient in all things? you haven't been obedient, we want to help you with that. If it needs more study, we'll study with you. If, if, it, if it's helping you to have that understanding, we'll, we'll, we'll work with you. But until you come up out of the water, God raises you out of the water, you're not a Christian, and don't be deceived. For those of us who have, that's the beginning. It's the beginning of, of having those sins washed away. But we've got to continue to give God what he deserves, which is walking in the light, doing those things that are pleasing to him. If we can help in any way, please come as together we stand and say.